Welcome back to STL Live. I'm Sarah Bernard, and I'm joined by doula and student midwife Brittany True Campbell. We've been talking with True about um, the differences between a doula and a midwife. Very interesting. And your training, almost done with your training? How much longer do you have? Actually, I'm just beginning my training. School oh. starts for me this fall, okay. and so I'm really excited about it. Yeah, so you're taking the, the doula work to the next level of actually being able to deliver babies. Yes, exactly. So let's talk about, um, in St. Louis, I mean, well, first of all, the way you described a doula or midwife, I don't know who wouldn't want to have that kind of support at, the, at their birth um, of their children. I had three children of my own, and I um, would have loved to have had you <laughs> Thank you. next to me <laughs> helping out during that process. But it sounds like almost a luxury. So is it something that is affordable for all women? Yes. Having a doula is affordable no matter what your financial situation is, and that's what the Natural Childbirth Education Circle is about, just bringing awareness for the different opportunities. Um, there are some doulas that do take state Medicaid, so if you have, um, if you do receive medic or medical insurance from the state, they'll accept that. Also, some doulas, including myself, we do take sliding skill um, fees. So if you cannot pay the regular amount, we will uh, change the amount based on your income. And so it's very affordable. We also have volunteer doulas. I was a volunteer doula for quite a while at a women's shelter here in St. Louis. And so we just, doulas really just want to make sure that mothers um, have the support and the love that they need uh, during their childbirthing journey. So. Yeah, and something interesting that I learned from you off camera is that um, so a lot of the childbirth uh, births that you're attending are actually in home, in people's private homes. In people's private homes and also in birthing centers. And so um, I've also attended hospital births, but the home births are really magical and they're really great. So. And you had one of your own. Yes. <laughs> so talk about that. Okay, so my home birthing experience was very beautiful. Um, I have three children. My oldest son is 14, and I had a cesarean section. And I feel that if I was educated properly, if I possibly knew of doulas at the time, I would have known my options so that I could have had the birth that I desired. And so because I had that first cesarean, um, my second doctor did not give me the option to have a normal birth. Mm. I was almost forced to have a cesarean again. And so when I expected Which my... Which you did, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I had mm. two cesareans at a hospital. And so when I expected my third child, I took my empowerment in my own hands and I educated myself. And I did have a very successful VBAC, um, which is a birth after you've had a cesarean at home surrounded with my family and my doula. I had two doulas. My mother is a doula hmm. and a good friend of mine and uh, midwives. They were um, there and it was very beautiful. That's amazing. Now yes. what if you're attending a home birth and um, your client who's having the child needs to go to the hospital for instance. Can, is the doula or midwife trained to identify when that would need to happen? Yes, and actually, and that's a great question because a doula, we do not handle the medical aspects of a childbirthing. The midwife is the one who would make that decision. And during the process before a childbirth begins, there's a plan that's called a transfer plan or also a birthing plan, which is where we will identify what hospital would you like to go to in the event that something was to happen. Mm -hmm. And if there's any signs of distress or um, if mother, you know, is just having any type of complications, the midwife is definitely trained to identify that. And we, I found that they do not wait until things get really bad. It's the first signs. We would rather mom to get to the hospital. Very conservative in that approach. Very. All right. So you have a meeting in August yes. that, to which the community is invited. So yes. tell us about what to expect at that meeting. Okay, great. So I'm really excited about this meeting. Um, it's going to be held at the Ferguson Municipal Library, and it's for the community for families that are either expecting a child or if they um, already have children 
but it's to help bring awareness to the different opportunities that are available and also to hear from qualified birthing professionals. We will have two midwives that are there and um, it's a midwife that owns the O'Fallon Birth and Wellness Center, um, Jessica, and also we have a senior midwife who is also a member of Le Leche League, which is an international breastfeeding support um, organization. And so we'll just be sharing uh, tips and um, different tools that can help mothers uh, during their journey. So it's a great opportunity to learn about all of these options available in our community, the cost, the people, that kind of thing. Yes, and we are focusing our awareness in the communities that have um, the CDC identified that women who are of African or Native, Native American descent and also teenagers or um, single mothers are at a, the majority are at a little bit of a higher risk to have maybe some complications with birth. So we want to reach those people to bring awareness. Very good. Well, thank you, True, so much for joining us today. The Natural Childbirth and Education Circle will hold their meeting on Wednesday, August 12th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. at the Ferguson Municipal Library. For more information on Brittany True Campbell, visit thecosmicgrove.com. We'll have more STL Live after this.